Hey guys, welcome to another episode and welcome to Garage Time TV. Today we're going to be tackling a couple major projects that are going to really upgrade our car to be safer and really take a load off our ignition switch as well as our headlight switch. We're going to be doing what's commonly referred to as a brown wire fix as well as adding a relay for our headlights. It's a really simple process, I'm going to show you guys how to do it. But before we get started, please make sure you hit the subscribe button down below. It really helps me to continue to make content for you guys as we continue to keep these cars on the road. I'm going to bring you all in closer as we start to do the brown wire fix first and I'll also label it down in the video when we start the headlight relay uh, side of the project so if that's what you're here for you can skip right to it. But let's jump into it and start getting this stuff fixed. So what I'm going to do first is show you guys on the bench the basic principles of how this is going to work. This is a spare ignition switch that I have. Our starter, this is actually a gear reduction starter. This is not the stock version. Highly recommend one of these if you can get one. Get your hands on one. It makes a whole world of a difference getting your car started. But this is a gear reduction starter, our switch. And this is the terminals on the back of the ignition switch and our plastic connector that comes with it. Most cars will have this plastic connector. Not all of them, but most will. Um, so it's easier to take the ignition switch out. So the brown wire basically provides power from the starter stud up through the plastic connector. Then from the connector, it goes through the brown wire, which is gonna be right here, our brown wire, and that attaches to terminal 30 on the back of our ignition switch. And this is where all of the power for the car comes through. It's all funneled from here through that brown wire, through the connector, onto the back of the terminal and through the switch. Now this is an often, uh, really common place for failure on these ignition switches and electrical problems in our cars, which are notorious. Uh, they're notorious for having. So the best way to fix this is actually to use the extra number 30 terminal on the back of our ignition switch and run it directly from our stud of our starter. Skip this, that way we avoid resistance and heat, which equals heat, so we don't melt any connectors, and hook it directly into the other number 30 terminal on the back of our ignition switch. So for example, we're gonna take this wire, imagine it was brown, just humor me here. We go directly from here, skip all of this, and go directly to the switch. Now since there's two terminals, uh, two 30 terminals on the back of the switch, it actually works better and safer, less resistance, and you're evening out the power um, between two terminals rather than funneling it all through one. So this is the basic principle. What we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you guys how to remove your uh, ignition switch out of your column. And we're going to start doing this fix since we have everything taken apart in our car behind us. It's going to be so much easier when we have all this room. So we're going to do it right now and jump in and let me show you how to do it. To remove our ignition switch, you're going to need your key, a Phillips head screwdriver, like this one, and some sort of small pick or a Phillips, sorry, a flathead screwdriver, a small one. So the first thing we're going to want to do is there's going to be two Phillips screws. There's going to be one here and the other one is down here right there you're going to unscrew those two then when we come back and look at our ignition switch take the key out you'll see that there's a little arrow right here you're going to turn the key to face that arrow like that so now the key is facing that arrow once you remove those two uh, Phillips screws there's a hole here on the side that's when you take your pick and you press down on the button on the inside and it should bring your whole ignition switch out make sure your connectors are disconnected on the back side here and over here and if you notice our connector is really really corroded and really melted and it looks like someone else already tried to do the brown wire fix and if that's what you call a fix you need to reevaluate because that's pretty bad and it's scary to think that we were testing electricals with the way that this is wrapped like this with just some electrical tape so it's a good thing we're going through here and checking this and getting it done correctly because this could have been a really really dangerous fire hazard so it's a pretty simple process to remove our switch so let's get it out So we finally got our ignition switch on the bench and you can see that on the bottom 
where the brown wire comes in, there is an additional empty number 30 switch terminal, not switch, there's an empty number 30 terminal on the back. That's one here parallel with this other brown one. So somebody has not done the recommended brown wire fix, but they did this hack job of, well, look how melted that is. That's really bad. And someone like filled it in. That's that's real bad. But then this is, I think, the icing on the cake where they just twist it together, put a little bit of solder on it and call it a day and wrap it with some electrical tape. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna unsolder this brown wire connection and resolder two new ones and go directly bypassing this and go directly to our starter on the stud that goes on the starter. So we're gonna skip this completely, do two brown wires directly from the terminal, directly to the stud through the firewall, the correct safe way. That way we don't have any fires, which clearly we've had issues in the past, at least this car's past. So let's get it done correct. All right, so we're back on a bench. We've got our ignition switch here. We've got number 10 wire, but this is green, but I highly recommend you use brown. I just don't have any brown, so I'm gonna stick with the green. Um, I've got different wire strippers. I've got our ring terminals. I've got heat shrink, our soldering wire, soldering guns, a uh, little Dremel tool to clean up all these connections when we get them out, and some needle nose pliers. Um, these are all real basic things that um, almost every garage will have. Um, so the first thing we're gonna wanna do is get these terminals out by pushing them back and through. I don't wanna reuse this old plastic that's all been melted and, and gross looking. We're gonna use the one that we have off of our spare one as a good, that we used in our example in the beginning. We'll pull out these old terminals and use this one because um, that's pretty gross. So let's get this one taken apart and uh, cleaning up these terminals here. So what I ended up doing was unsoldering our old connection. So many of these were just, I don't know what that is, wax or glue or I don't know, melted plastic. And it's just really brittle. And I mean, there's junk all over this thing. So I just unsoldered it from the back of our ignition switch, get rid of this. And our donor one from the beginning of this episode, I resoldered them back in. So those are all in the correct terminals. I followed the wiring diagram to make sure that's where they go. Uh, just for your reference, the blue and black goes in the middle to the INT, red is to 50, pink is to 15, and black is the 30 slash 1, which leaves at the bottom here our two 30 terminals, which we're going to be attaching our green wire, which should be brown, but we're going to be using green. We're going to solder those in here and attach those, and then we'll run them through the firewall. I'm probably going to pull off uh, six feet or so and start from here. Um, it's going to be a lot easier to feed it through the firewall, through the back, starting at the ignition switch, and then adding a D-ring, a, a terminal ring at the end when we get it through. Um, that way we're not soldering underneath the ignition switch and stuff like that. Just get this hard part done and over with. So let's get that in there, cut out our length of wire, and then we can start feeding it through the firewall and getting it connected to the starter. So we've got our ignition switch back installed. It's just to reverse the process. Just make sure your key is pointing to that little arrow. Push in the button and it should slide all the way through just like this and be seated back in. So you can see we've got the wires coming in and we've got our green wires which are our brown wires. Those are going to go up under the dash here. They're going to come out the firewall on this side, out through here, and we should be able to tie it into this loom. Um, but we're going to go down to our starter which will be sitting right about here. So we're going to undo these two nuts here 
and see if we can bring it down and maybe use this clip to help hold those wires until we go to an engine installation or we'll just kind of tie them up here out of the way until we get our starter with our engine and everything back in here. That is prepared for when we get in there. So let's get those wires through the firewall and tied up out of the way. So as you can see, we've got that green wire coming through our firewall and our little rubber grommet here does have a slot in it for the wires to come through. Just like that. And we'll be able to put our metal retainer. We'll probably clean it up, shoot it with some fresh paint and stick it back on there. Um, but for now, we are gonna tuck these out of the way because our old brown wire, which we're not using anymore, is going to be removed so that is going to be disconnected down here and this is what's going to go in it and replace it we're just going to solder on those ring terminals that way we can put them on the starter um, and double double is better so that is our brown wire fix all we have to do is attach this to the starter and that is taking care of less resistance brighter lights and less heat so that's always a good thing when it comes to electrical all right guys, so the second half of this video is going to be installing our headlight relay kit. This is available from BigAuto.com. I'll make sure to drop a link in the description down below where you guys can get yours. It comes with instructions, but we're going to crack this open, lay it all out, take a look at it on the bench, and then we're going to jump in the car and make our headlights so much brighter. All right, so don't mind the mess on the bench. You probably hear the heaters going on in the background, so don't mind those. But we're opening this up for the first time. Uh, this is our headlight relay kit. Looks like we've got our two relays, an inline fuse, which is nice, and it's a modern fuse, way easier to deal with, 15 amp fuse. So we're just gonna stick that in there for now so we don't lose it. Just like that. Make sure it's always seated. And let's crack open these directions. Real simple, one page tells you exactly where everything goes. Black to ground, blue to power, uh, whether you use your starter bolt or any other 12 volt source. Your long green and brown wires are going to be here. Our passenger headlight, the short green one is for the driver's side. The white wire is for the harness uh, back to the firewall. And the uh, red fuse hoser, holder, which is the yellow one here, um, you splice it into the power supply. So we've got a little bit of soldering to do. Um, not a big deal, real easy. Something that can be done on the bench before we get into the cars. And these are our relays. They come with uh, the de description on top of what they are. Also comes with these little hold brackets. You just kind of slide them in here. Depends how we want to want to do it, but I think we're gonna go um, hang them up like that. We'll have to find a spot in the engine compartment where we can hang these out. That way they have a good place to to sit, and we will get those situated. But it's nice because these are already connected, already ready to go. We can see we've got our one ground. If I can bring it down for you guys. We've got our one ground wire. We've got our longer one to go to our passenger side because these are going to be mounted on the driver's side inner fender well on the wall there. We'll find a good spot for these. And we probably will run it off of either the alternator uh, when that comes in the car or on the... Um, down straight to the starter. I don't know if I want to super overload the starter post because we've just got done with that brown wire fix. So we'll have to kind of see and uh, get a feel for it when we get to that point. But we're going to get this installed um, and all wired up. We will have to change some of the connections because these are the older style connections. We have those bullet connectors, those round ones. We'll probably have to snip those off and put some spade connectors in here. That way they fit in easily um, with some heat shrink so we don't short them out. So let's get, uh, get a little bit of stuff soldered together. That way we're safe, good connections, heat shrink, all that good stuff. And we can jump in the car and get this all set up. So we found a home for our relays. There's an old, um, I'd have to do some research on what it is. It's some type of other relay that didn't have anything plugged into it. 
So we'll find another spot for that, maybe upside down or somewhere next to it. But there's two studs where we could screw these relays on, nice and front by the ground. So what we've done so far is we've drilled the holes for the mounts a little bit bigger, that way they'll slide over those studs. And we've got our black ground wire as part of our relay grounded to the car behind the post. Now I did shave off some of that paint so it's touching bare metal, that way we have a good ground. And we've got different kinds of connectors. So these are normal spade connectors, but what our car has is what's called bullet connectors, which is kind of rounded um, connectors that just slide into place, slide together really easily. So what we're gonna have to do is snip these off and we have our own new replacement uh, spade connectors. So this double white wire actually goes back into the, towards the fuse box, towards the, the cab of the car. This green and brown actually goes to our headlights. And then we have a duplicate green and brown on the other side of the car. And then our blue wire goes to power uh, where we're gonna put our inline fuse, either to the alternator, which is in this general area, or uh, we can go down behind underneath the booster to the starter post. Be kind of cleaner to hide the wires down and below. But because we don't have anything in the engine bay, we're just gonna attach this for now. We're gonna solder that together, put some heat shrink over this connection, over all of our connections, and we'll just have to leave this out for now uh, to see which way we wanna go, alternator or starter. So let's get a, a good time lapse going here. I'm just gonna be soldering connections, putting some heat shrink on connections, making sure they're all solid and we don't short out anything. Um, so let's knock it out. All right guys, this is gonna be a really good test. One, for our brown wire fix to make sure it works all the way through the ignition switch. And it's also be a good test for our headlights. Now last episode, two episodes ago, we started working on our headlights to see if they even worked. So I'll take a clip of that and show you guys what that looked like right now. And we're gonna flip on the headlights. All right, so we've got the headlights. Okay, so you saw what they look like. So now we're going to um, turn them on here and see if there's any improvement. So. Here we go. All right, so we're turning our key on. We've got power inside the cab, so that means we've got wire power coming through our ignition switch. Oh yeah, that's regular, and that's brights. Much better, much, much better. They probably need to be adjusted as far as the angle where they hit. I think they're a little too high, but those are much brighter. Much, much better. And on the inside of the cab, you can see that we've got lights working. Don't mind the mess. You know, we've been we've been doing things. But we see we've got power coming in and uh, all of our fuses are still good. So that's, that's awesome progress and uh, everything still works and I'm glad that worked out and I think that just speaks for itself. All right guys, that's gonna be it for today's episode. We've got our brown wire fix and we've got our headlight relay installed. Pretty straightforward process. It's just a matter of knowing what wire goes where and using the correct gauge uh, when it comes to that brown wire fix to make sure we're getting all the power we can out of our 12 volt uh, battery. Um, again, those two rings, I don't have them attached right now, but they do go to the starter post. Um, 
and they go to those number 30 terminals on the back of the starter or the ignition switch. And we also installed that Vic Auto Sports headlight relay kit, super easy, straightforward. Uh, we just had to make a little bit of modifications to fit uh, different adapters of the ones that they came with. Those bullet style ones are later, and this kit is kind of a universal. So we just had to make a couple modifications and it worked just fine. We could even hear the relays clicking as we turn those headlights on. So much brighter. So that's gonna be it guys. Thank you so much for watching. Just make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Subscribing helps me so, so much. You guys don't even know. So please subscribe so I can continue to work on this project and make these videos for you guys. There are little tech tips here and there sometimes. And it's just nice to see someone else do it before you do it yourself. And I know how that goes sometimes. So with that guys, we'll see you next time.